Hello, friends. This one's going to be a little bit different. I try to make things pretty accessible on this channel, uh, make it kind of entry level for people trying to get into this business of practicing being a happy human being. But I have a really interesting question from over on Patreon that sort of gets more into the deep cuts of this sort of practice, um, which is fun in that it's indi indicative of the sort of work that I'm trying to help people do. So let's get to it. The question is, in tracking internal experiences that you have had. So, so let's get to it. The question is, in tracking internal experiences, have you ever had the recollection of an internal experience make it difficult for you to recognize that experience when it comes around again? It occurred to me in meditation today that the memory of an experience might put me on a wild goose chase when I think I'm recognizing something rather than just experiencing the thing that's happening. So there are three considerations that come out of this question. Uh, the first is memory, your relationship between your memory and your experience. Uh, the second is a process that I like to call noodling, uh, which is a pitfall uh, that can beset people when they're getting involved in any kind of introspective practice. And the third is answering the question of just what is it that we're supposed to be doing if we're doing an introspective practice like meditation. Um, so let's look at those in turn. So memory. The naive view of memory is that my memory is a record of things that happened in the past. Um, which any, if you compare notes with anybody that you know about something that you, some occasion that you think is memorable, uh, and get their recollection of that, you'll discover very quickly that memory can't be a strict uh, record of what happened in the past or, you know, somebody's wrong. Um, when you attend more closely to your experience of memory, it becomes pretty apparent that what's going on is that memory is a record of how you experienced things and the subset of those experiences that your brain happened to think were important at the time. So, you know, there are events in the world that are going on. Uh, they get constructed into some experience. And then, out of that constructed experience, certain things are selected, for whatever the brain's reasons, uh, as significant and get stored in memory. But most things do not get stored in memory. Um, so it's, it's not a very reliable record of the past. It gives you some sort of constraints on what the past could have been, but it doesn't tell you what the past was is the point there. And that's just at the first pass. So if something happens, and then you recollect it. But after you recollect something, you have to be very careful. Because eventually, when that drops out of your present experience, it gets stored again. That memory gets updated. It gets colored by the recollection. So your present state today, as you recollect something that happened yesterday, is going to affect how you experience it when you recollect it tomorrow. And so that can be very tricky as memories that are especially important to us can accumulate all sorts of interesting additions over time. So what does this have to do with this question? What I think is going on here is you have some experience. You're doing an introspective practice, and often that will lead you to experiences that are unprecedented in your life. Whoa, that was really cool. What's going on there? I want to have that experience again. And the temptation is to get involved in a process of categorization, of trying to fix exactly what was this thing that happened, because I really want it to happen again, so I got to make sure that I'm ready, and I got to put it in the right box and get it you know, turn just the right knob to make sure I know every single thing about which is a dangerous game because, of course, if you're sitting there recollecting this experience that you've had, one, you're not paying attention to what's going on right now, which is really, really dangerous um, because a lot of stuff can be going on behind the scenes while you're lost in, in what I call noodling, right? You're just sort of trying to putts with this experience and try to figure out exactly how to categorize it. Uh, and 
if your categorization ends up being faulty in some way, that's gonna get stored in your memory of the experience, right? So you're gonna have this maladapted frame attached to your recollection of what that experience was. And what that means is that the next time you recollect that experience, you're gonna have less ability to really inspect that experience as it was. Um, you know, the limited subset of information that got stored about that experience is now marred by this noodling process, which is dropped it into a frame that doesn't fit it. Um, and so I think that, yes, you know, I definitely have had experiences where I've gotten carried away, <laughs> you know, had a lot of fun just noodling around on something. Oh, that was really cool. How does that fit in with this? And does this jibe with what I read over here? And yada, 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 yada. And missed important information um, in sub subsequent reoccurrences of that experience. Because I was so invested in trying to make my new experience fit the frame that I had attached to the old experience that I wasn't there for the experience as it was happening. Um, now, fortunately, if you keep at it, if something's important, it usually does come back around. Um, and, you know, life in a monastic community was very funny because people would have a tremendous insight that was life-changing, earth-shattering, and they would eagerly report it in our in our group meditation sessions and then completely forget about it, get lost in noodling it, and, you know, it just dropped off their radar. And three months later, earth-shattering revelation and it got on such a cycle that most of the people in the room could could do their entire spiel for them when they were super excited about this new revelation that they just had it's like yeah yeah that's steve that's the one you have like clockwork every six weeks but cool we're glad you're having that experience maybe it'll stick this time um so it's not actually a high-risk endeavor to to noodle stuff but it can get in the way now what is it that we should be doing instead of that. What's our job if we're doing an introspective practice? It's to pay attention. You don't need to figure out what's happening. You just need to be present for what's happening. And your innate faculties will take the necessary steps to integrate that into your understanding. And this is a, this is a difficult place because it requires a lot of you know, ultimately faith and trust, because for most people, um, sort of their innate intelligence has been obstructed for so long by mimetic cruft that's been attached to them over the course of their life, that they're not actually used to trusting that, that they can just take in an experience, some time will pass, and then information will arise about the significance of that experience, right? They the desire for there to be a doing, some discursive process by which we generate the important information is deeply ingrained in us. Um, for me, I remember that very vividly, being trained in elementary school and getting in a lot of trouble all the time for having the right answer, not being able to explain where I got it from. And just like, I'm just looking at the thing. I know this is the answer. Is it the answer? Yes, it's the answer. Why do we keep having to have this conversation? Um, but they got me in the end. And it took me a long time to really get used to the idea that most of the valuable information synthesizing and generating processes that go on in the human person are unconscious. They're not verbal. The verbal cognition is for communicating between humans, not for doing work within one human. So that noodling process, which tends to be highly verbal, you know, recollecting verbiage that I've encountered before and seeing if I can cram that on to this new experience that I've had that I'm very excited about. Um, it's not productive, right? So when we are doing an introspective practice, we need to be focused on our number one job, which is just to be present as things unfold. A happens, B happens, C happens. Okay, cool. That's a regularity that I've observed. The next time this comes around, does it go A, B, C? Or is there another path into this experience? Is A the only way to get here? If B is the experience that I'm interested in, can B ever lead to something other than C? I'm just being present. But if I'm sitting here 
noodling B, I miss its connections to the other facets of my experience. I miss the sequencing, the, the arising of new states from the state that I might be interested in uh, and how that state arose from the previous state. So the job is just to be present. Uh, the noodling is a trap uh, and we need to be careful that we don't reshape our memories uh, to such an extent that they become not useful guides to our future experience. So hopefully that's somewhat accessible uh, and hopefully offer some guidance to the person who asked the question. Um, if you want to get engaged with this sort of this sort of highly esoteric uh, introspection of the mental states of the human person, uh, check out Patreon. It's probably a link down below.